Hey everyone, uh, this video will be all about how you change the appearance of uh, your units. So this will be a series of uh, videos in which I go into uh, ways of differing complexity of how to change your unit's appearance. Uh, now this will be the most basic, which is if you are using a, a skeletal mesh which uses the default Unreal Engine skeleton. Uh, which you likely are if you are making humanoid units, which will be uh, the case for many projects, I suspect. So this simple approach should work for a lot of you. For these tutorials, you will notice that I have imported uh, some assets that I will be using. Uh, so the one that we will be using in this video will be the Infinity Blade Warriors pack and the Anim Starter pack. Um, and then for a later video, we'll, we'll be using this Paragon Iggy Scorch uh, model. Uh, but these are the ones we'll be using now. These are both available for free in the Unreal Engine launcher. You don't need to use these. You can use any skeleton that uses the um, default Unreal Engine skeletal mesh, which will be the case for any humanoid marketplace asset, for instance. Um, and then um, the anim starter pack you can use any custom animation you want but if you want to use these ones you can check them in at the, in the marketplace uh, so the infinity blade warriors here available for free uh, provided by epic uh, and then you can search for the anim starter pack i'll get right back to these shortly but first let's talk a bit about how uh, the advanced turn-based tile toolkit handles uh, units and their appearance more generally. Uh, so they are units are split into kind of two different kinds of actors. So one of them is the unit, uh, which you can find the base of uh, in uh, the base folder here, and then core, uh, and under units, uh, and this is BP unit. So BP unit, uh, it handles all the game logic related to units. It handles. Um, like its uh, stats and abilities and references to these units are kept in the arrays of the grid manager uh, so that it knows where on the grid the unit are placed and so on. Uh, but the units, they don't actually care about their transform at all. They don't, oop, I lost it. Um, so they don't care about where they are actually placed. Um, so that is handled by the puppet. We'll get back to that. But let's see what happens if we just use a unit uh, without any puppet attached. Uh, so we can place it over here by the enemies. Let's just get rid of our other units. And if I hit play, uh, you will see uh, that we have our move tiles and all of this. Uh, and if I move, you will see that the unit moves over there instantly. And that's because there is no movement animation that is played. Uh, check out my uh, tutorials on the action system, which explains this queue of actions. But since there are no actions here, um, it, uh, it just instantly moves over here. And we can see that the unit is here. If we attack, we will also see that the attack hits instantly. And then now something strange happens when the enemies attack, they run over so they're close to the unit. Um, but they attack in seemingly random direction. That's because this unit has no puppet that they can uh, attack towards, so it isn't actually placed in any sort of you know physical uh, transform location in the viewport. Uh, but you see that it can still be killed even though it has no health part to display its health or anything. So all the game logic works, even though we will see a couple of errors, I believe, uh, when we hit stop here. Yeah, so we've got a few errors, and this is because the actions uh, that show uh, the animations of attacking and units getting hurt and so on, uh, they assume that the unit has a puppet. Uh, so if we go and check this error here, we see that uh, in the event graph, we got an error uh, here, and that is because we are looking for, you know, the source puppet of the puppet that is executing this attack animation. And since our unit has none, it throws an error. Uh, it still exits and ends the action because that's how it's set up. But yeah, uh, the unit will assume that we have a puppet. But you probably want your units to have a puppet because if not, they are not visualized in any way. And uh, puppet can be anything really, or it can be any actor rather. Um, so in this video, we'll go into showing a 
using a humanoid skeletal mesh, but in later ones we'll show how to use uh, not even skeleton meshes at all. You can make it be visualized in any way you want. So uh, because of that, these actions all assume that you have some sort of puppet actor that you're using to visualize uh, your um, unit, which I believe is safe to assume. Well, I believe that's a long enough digression. Uh, let's just get rid of this unit and um, we can check out where puppets are uh, located in uh, this asset. So if we go to, instead of core units, we go directly into the units folder, and there is a puppets folder here. As uh, so you'll notice in units, we have animations and animation blueprints, uh, and we also have some variants of units. And these units, they are already set up with puppets already. So this is, uh, if you use making a unit that uses a skeletal mesh, a BP unit anim is what I recommend as the base that you build your units upon. Uh, I would, you could create a child blueprint of this unit, um, but I would probably create a duplicate of it instead, so you can freely uh, change anything that you want within that unit. This is uh, made as like a sample way of how you can uh, animate your puppets through your units. Uh, but this unit also is the same invisible unit that you saw earlier. So how can we see uh, the mesh in this case? Uh, because you will notice uh, that there is actually no skeletal mesh, but it does have a child actor. And this child actor is used to display a puppet. And you can see this here in the world outliner that there is a puppet attached uh, to this unit though this puppet is actually not used within the game at all. So uh, the puppet that you're seeing here and the puppet that you're seeing here when I hit play are actually two different actors. Uh, so during gameplay, uh, if we look for this puppet again here, um, let's see, I can search for puppet. Uh, you will see that they are separate actors. They are not connected to the unit. And if we find the units, um, you will see that they have no, uh, or maybe you wouldn't be able to see that in, if I search for it, but you can see it here that they have no uh, puppets attached. Uh, so they are actually separate. So the puppets that are here in the viewport, they are deleted when the game starts. They are just used to display these units when we are um, setting up our level. Uh, but uh, during gameplay, we are using a completely separate actor uh, so that we can, for instance, safely destroy a unit while keeping the puppet if that is needed uh, for gameplay purposes. Okay, I keep getting into digressions here, but uh, hopefully that's useful. Uh, I'm going to show you soon how to change the appearance of your unit, I swear. Uh, but yeah, so the appearance, the puppets, they are in the puppet folder here. Here you can see some examples of those. Uh, and this one is using BP Actor Puppet, I believe. Uh, so if we look at the um, the details of our unit here, you will find uh, the puppet um, is under animation here, the puppet class. If we change the puppet class, so as you can see, the puppet can be absolutely any uh, actor class, uh, but we will search for puppet because that's what we are naming them. You see that we have a few to uh, choose from, uh, from the various example projects here. Uh, so I can choose the uh, debug one, which is the one used by these others here. You can see that the appearance changes um, to this unit here and also the animation blueprint uh, in this case. So changing the puppet of a unit will change its appearance. Um, so if we want to use one of the new skeletal meshes that we imported, we will therefore need to create a new puppet. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, I will use BP actor puppet here as a base. In this case, I'll create a duplicate. So you could create a child uh, actor, of course, of this. Um, but uh, in this way, we have more control if we want to uh, change it up uh, more in future tutorials. Uh, so I'll call this BP actor and then uh, not puppet underscore, because that would imply that it is a child actor of BP actor puppet, which is it is not. Um, so we will instead, uh, I will call this tutorial uh, puppets. Okay, so there we have a starting point. 
So we brought along a lot of code here. Obviously you would not want to create a duplicate puppet for every uh, change in a skeletal mesh's appearance that you have, uh, since that would be duplicating of code, which you generally don't want. Uh, but you would uh, probably want to have your own custom duplicate to be able to modify this as the base for your game, as it, you likely have different requirements than just a base toolkit. And then you would create child actors based on that actor again. Uh, but yeah, to change the appearance, uh, let's go to the unit mesh here and we can change it here. And we can change it to any of our new imported skeletal meshes. Let's have a look at those. Uh, so if we go to Infinity Blade Warriors and our character and complete characters, here we see that we have, uh, let's get rid of this annoying error, uh, a few different ones to choose from. I'm just gonna be lazy and zoom in like this. We can find one that we are happy with. In an older tutorial, I used this one. Uh, though I like this cardboard guy, but uh, let's change it up so people won't be confused and I can use a different thumbnail for our video. Uh, let's use this uh, golden guy here. Speaking of which, I have a couple of tabs open from when I tested stuff out earlier. Let's just close those. Not sure how the sausage is made. Uh, okay, so uh, we're in the skeletal mesh here. This uh, one seems like a fine starting point for our custom puppet. So what would happen if we just go here and change uh, our skeletal mesh uh, to this puppet? Let's go to the viewport view so we can see him here. And he was called uh, Charm oh. Golden. So yeah. As you can see, he's T-posing and compiling does not change this. Changing the anim class to AVP unit does not change this. Uh, if we then, uh, oh, we're terribly zoomed in. Uh, if we go to this guy now, and we change his puppet uh, to our new one that's called tutorial puppet. There and hit play, we will have some issues so he's moving, if we're attacking, uh, then actually nothing happens because no animation is added to the queue which is expected and uh, thus the animation queue is halted. Um, so the problem here is that our skeletal mesh uses a completely different skeleton uh, from the one that we use um, for our other units or for our animation blueprint that we selected. Uh, actually not a completely different, it's actually the exact same skeleton that they're use, uh, using, but Unreal Engine doesn't know this, so we need to tell it, tell it to use uh, the skeleton that we're using for our animation blueprint. So our animation blueprint, incidentally, is under units here, AVP unit, uh, and we can see here the skeleton that it's using uh, is this one, uh, which uh, if we search for it in the browser, let's see, how do we do this? Yeah, you can see it here at least. Um, that it is the within game advanced turn by style toolkit units and it's the UE4 uh, mannequin skeleton. Um, and uh, so that's the one we will want to be using for our new skeletal mesh. Uh, so let's find the skeletal mesh again, golden here, and we went, want to then uh, for this uh, assign a different skeleton. So we choose a sign skeleton and we want to find the appropriate one. And since they are actually the same skeleton, you will see that some of them will have the same name. Uh, so the ones that are used in the anim starter pack that I imported is the same name as the one used in uh, ATBTT. Uh, but this is the one we want to use. Uh, currently we're using the SK mannequin skeleton instead, which is like I said, many times the same one. So we choose this one instead and we click accept. And now we should be using the appropriate skeleton for this. It needs to be saved, so let's do this. And we're going back to our tutorial puppet. If we hit compile, we see now that it is able to use the appropriate animation blueprint. And if we hit play, we see that we can move and our attack animation works and our hurt animation works. And I believe that the death animation also should work. So yeah, all of that is in order. I can also quickly do what I talked about earlier. Uh, so my suggestion then that you have this uh, new puppet as your base and then you can create a child of this. So we have the tutorial puppet. Yeah, we can just call it child. Let's keep it like, like that. Um, 
And here we can assign then a different skeletal mesh. It's quick enough to do if we want to use this yeah, natural skeletal mesh here. Let's see, right clicking takes some time because it's not compiled. And assign skeleton, we're just doing the exact same thing that we did earlier. And then in our new puppet, the um, this is the child one. We can change the skeletal mesh. Uh, and it will also work just like that. Uh, let's just check that. We will make a new unit, change this puppet type to the uh, tutorial puppet child. And now we have two units with two different skeletal meshes for our player units. So this is a good stopping point, I believe, for and the first video now in the next one i will go into how we are going to add uh, custom animations so see you in the next one